Uppity Unicorny here with um, some laundry in the background. So if you can hear that, my apologies to you. I hope it's not as distracting as this LinkedIn uh, notification that I just got. Anyhow, um, this is in response to some of the hate comments that I got under my um, Tariq Nasheed buck breaking video. And it's so funny, these zealots of his, these people who, you know, he's just their prophet of God somehow, um, the way that they feel and the way that they spell. I mean, it's one thing to have an adjacent key error, aka a typo. But honestly, like these people just show their lackluster level of education. And it's no wonder that they follow such an ignorant, hateful man. Um, it's so funny the way, like, I mean, I say Tariq just because that's the way that he says his name, but really the, the, the name in Arabic is like, um, so the letters are ta ra qaf, right? It's Tariq, Tariq, right? It, it means path, like, like a path in Arabic. But of course, you know, these people who pick up these Arabic names as to separate themselves from other African Americans as to be superior of some sort, like they don't speak the language. They don't even know what it means. I mean, these relics of, I mean, unless he's a part of something like the nation of gods and earth, earths, um, which are five percenters, because I'd notice his middle name. I mean, obviously this is a fake name. It's not the name that he was born with. And even if it was a name he was born with, it's actually even more shame, but no self-respecting Muslim would ever make their middle name Allah. Tariq Allah Nasheed. Subhanallah. Like I like like the most disrespectful. Like and that's why I said maybe he's a part of those nation of gods and earth's people. But I could have sworn a long time ago I saw him talking to a bunch of Muslims during the month of Ramadan. Maybe it was some other um it was a blog, but whatever. Anyhow the nation of gods and earths, you know, they do this whole English thing um, where they say Allah means arm, leg, leg, arm, head. In other words, God is the black man. Uh, so so that might be what he's doing there. But Tariq is pronounced Tariq and uh, it means a path. Um, li like a way as in like, a, it's, it, it, how do I say this? It could be a way of life or a way that you actually tread upon, like, like a trodden path. And then Nasheed is like, um, it's, it's a Nasheed to a Muslim is what gospel is to a Christian, except for it's acapella. So a Nasheed is closer to what an African American would call a Negro spiritual than what you would see in church with, you know, a bunch of instruments, you know, a Negro spiritual could be like a field work song where you're in the fields and you're, you know, picking cotton or digging to a beat, right? Um, like, like just a stump clap stump clap stump clap or something like that but not it's basically uh acapella without instruments so anyhow thoric Allah nasheed there there you have this guy's name anyhow and i'm sure the majority of his father followers have no they have no reference to any of these words because they're ignorant Anyhow, so I have uh, a number of really hateful comments here, and I implore you to go and read them. Um, but however, I mean, if you have a sensitive heart, as do I, then then don't. But this Nunu Loader guy, Loader, L-O-E-D-E-R-R, -E Nunu Loader says in all capital letters, um, with horrible typing and, and spelling, it's not just an adjacent key error it's or a typo, it's just actually pathetic spelling. It says, shout out to Tariq. He, he's the only one bringing the hurtful or hurtful, H-I-R, uh, hurtful truth. The man brings facts. You just, as in Y-A, you just refused to accept it. If you don't like being called a bad wench, don't act like one. So this guy is incredibly ignorant and uneducated, and it would make sense because that's probably what you would have to be in order to submit to the leadership and uh, teachings of a man like Tariq Nasheed. Tariq Nasheed, like uh, Kevin Samuels, I define as a broken clock. They truly are right at least twice a day, but um, unfortunately, that's not enough to tell time. So um, the part of this that I want to focus on, I mean is that if you don't like being called a bed wench, don't act like one. So 
I replied to him, I wrote such a sad comment. I'm sorry you took the time to write something like this in public. However, I wanted to use this as a teachable moment because I know that these men love to scream this word bed wench, bed wench, bed wench. Now me and myself, look, I just got back from the nail shop. I got a fill. My very pro-black African-American high value six figure man who owns and operates multiple businesses, you know, takes care of me. I am a stay at home girlfriend, whatever you want to call me. Um, with a ring on my finger, so I'm not going anywhere. Not married, but not going anywhere, claimed nonetheless. Anyhow, um, but he assumed by, it, it could be my voice, my accent, my self-carriage, whatever it is that I'm in an interracial relationship. So first of all, yeah, I mean, this is clearly a person who's never gotten out of their backwoods, backyard, back alley, hood rat ghetto to understand that there are diverse kinds of African-American women who we don't need a ghetto Shaniqua accent to be proud of who we are and proud of where we come from and proud of our roots and culture. And also, um, this word bed wench is really on par with the N word. And unlike the N word, th there's no, this word has never evolved some level of like, like a term of endearment. It has never, ever, ever, ever become a good word as opposed to, you know, the N word can be, you know, uh, so many things like, you know, you had the Negus of N E G U S Negus of, you know, um, Ethiopia, where it's, you know, denoting a king and, and, and a, uh, a royal, regal, noble status. Or um, you have the term of end endearment, like my in word, you have it as an insult. It's a very multi-layered word, right? In the N word. But things like Sambo, things like Bedwinch, Bedbuck, uh, Sapphire, um, Uncle Tom, like these things never eventually like evolved or developed better meanings or layered, I should say, meanings. Uh, Bedwinch is um, on par with the N word and the F word that rhymes with maggot. And so many people who do not study the American lexicon when it comes to uh, the English language, uh, they miss out on those things. And it's crazy because there are so many ignorant African-American men who love to use the F word that rhymes with maggot. And they love to use that, you know, mf -er word, that mother fornicator word, right? And these are all terms that were created while we were captives in America. While we were captives, some of us stolen from Africa, some of us captives in our own native indigenous land. Like what? In God's name, are you doing even using these terms? I know some of you may not know the Aboriginal history of African Americans. The majority of Chahtas or Choctaws, Chickasaws, they're all black. If you go look at the official chiefs, they have blonde hair, blue eyes, and white skin. That I mean, all I can say is that true Native Americans, true Aborigines, they don't need sunscreen. That's all I'm going to say about that. Now, um... For those of you who don't know what a bed winch is, a bed winch or a bed warmer is a woman or child who was used as a um, I want to say as a concubine, but I don't even know if that is the proper term because this is rape. And I pray my channel isn't demonetized for saying the R word. I will refer to that as the R word from here on out. But these were people who were enslaved. They didn't have a choice. So women from the ages of 7 to 77 were bedwinches, forced against their will for centuries. To give you an idea, I mean, you could be on a plantation and you, your mom, your sisters, your cousins could all end up at some point in time being used as a bedwinch for not just your master, but for his friends, colleagues, politicians, people he's doing business with in order to impress them, like people, people from out of town, people from out of the, out of the country, touring America, like just used your body used. 
and you have no freedom. You, you do or die. So they want to make up this, you know, they, they want to do this revisionist history where they're like, oh, you know, the white woman, this is Tariq Nasheed, right? The white woman and the black man were oppressed by the white man and the black woman and blah, blah, because he's not a pro-black, he's pro-black male, he hates black women, right? That's why he would use, him and his followers would use such a racial epithet. And like I said, Tariq Nasheed told, told an audience of thousands of black men to aspire to marry women like his wife who have a white mother. He said, marry the mixed, the biracial woman with, with white mothers and not the ones with black mothers because they'll act like a black woman. You basically want somebody black enough to say that you're not a sellout, but white enough to satisfy what you hate about yourself. Like, like, like this, this is a disgusting person. This is a former pimp. This is a person, I mean, look up Flex and, and all his Mackin books. This is a womanizer. This is a filthy human being. You know what a pimp is? A pimp is, is, a, is a human trafficker, a sex trafficker. And this is who they're using like Malcolm X. This is who they're using like Medgar Evers. This is who they're using like a Martin Luther King. <laughs> this is not a man who, of, of repentance. This is not a man who's sorry. This is a man who figured out another hustle. This is not a man who's righteous. This is not a man who's compassionate, sensitive, kind, like, like, uh, help. Okay, anyhow, um. Uh, what I will say is what me and Tariq Nishi do have in common is that we were both doxed by, doxed by a very nasty woman by the name of Cynthia G. Um, and I used to have compassion for him regarding that. But after I figured out what he was really about, I turned from being one of his sympathizers to somebody who realized he's anti, he literally anti me and every woman that looks like me with two black parents. So... Back to this bed wench, back to this painful bed wench word. Women who are basically designated for rape, okay? The men who are saying this, they have women in their family. Their great grandmothers, great great grandmothers, aunts, cousins, like were bed wenches. And some of them were bed bucks, as in used. For the sexual pleasure of white men and women who own them and those who didn't even own them. People who rented them out. Like, to use these words and to come from that kind of history. I mean, you've, you've got to be some kind of, a, some kind of desensitized. You've got to be some kind of dunce. Some kind of dense. I mean, I... I have consensual relations with my partner and I mean, I can still get hurt when I want it. I can still get hurt. It can still be too deep, too big, too long, too wide, won't fit. And I will get hurt. Excuse me for being so graphic, but I can still get hurt consensually. Can you imagine what happens to the insides of a woman or a child when it's not consensual? When it's not consensual? When you're having consensual sex as a woman and you're aroused, your private parts goes from about three inches deep to about six or seven. It doubles. And that's about all you can accommodate unless you've been with a partner for a long time who's, you know, working with nine or ten, ten inches. And he has over time moved your cervix back uh, in order to accommodate his great size. But imagine being completely unaroused and somebody takes... Somebody takes something like a ruler to the inside of your body. And when you're unaroused, we, as women, when we are not aroused, we can barely accommodate uh, a tampon or, or pulling that tampon out once it's soaked with blood. And again, I, I'm sorry to be so graphic, but I must be because this term bed winch is that brutal. It's that serious. And they just toss it around. Our ancestors, they didn't have a choice. And they're like, oh, you liked it. You liked it. Well, here, here's the deal. Some women, if they knew that they could protect their families because the master was in love with them or in lust with them, yeah, they used sexual man manipulation in order to make sure their son didn't get sold down the river or their grandmother didn't get, you know, whatever, or their dad didn't get beaten to the point of death, right, by manipulating the heart of a master who may have fallen in love with a black woman or a quote-unquote mulatto wo woman or an octoroon or a quadroon or whatever she was. 
it was still an act of survival. Either way you put it. Either way you put it. Stop giving victims some kind of imaginary power. Like, like this is sick. The way that this revisionist history is, is sick. The rape of your ancestors is supposed to hurt you. You're not supposed to be immune to that. You don't see, I mean, this, this, this is uh, the, the, the poor state of some African-Americans mentally, right? This is why I think just being African-American alone should entitle you to, to state-funded therapy. Like, like, you need therapy for being African-American in America. You might not need it for being Somali. You might not need it for being Nigerian. But you definitely need it for being an African-American alone. It, it, there's just too much to deal with every day in, in the things in our past that have created our culture today. This word, this F word that rhymes with maggot was meant to describe African-American men. When you Google the word F-A-G, when you look in the Merriam-Webster, you are going to see a word. The definition is going to say a bundle of sticks or a stick from a bundle of sticks. Google it. Now, how did that word F-A-G become F-A-G-G-O-T? Black men would be raped and killed as a part of a buck-breaking System now a buck is like you know like like a deer you know a male deer or whatever a young one just like a stallion is like a young male horse blah 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 but like we would we were chattel we we were considered cattle property so we were called bucks as well and there's a buck breaking process to make sure that you you are fully emasculated and that you never stand up as a man and that's why you see so many African American men who are still buck broken and you can tell because they're cowards. You can tell because they'd rather fight women than men. You can tell because they'd rather submit themselves to an anti-black system, to anti-black institutionalized racism, than to change that at least for themselves and their family, if not for their entire community. Now, my man is not like that. But clearly, I mean... Clearly, Tariq Nasheed is an expert on the subject for a reason. He can relate. Uh, his buck breaking thing is out uh, on DVD only. If you want to get it, go get it. So you have this word where th- this this word that rhymes with maggot. Basically, you would have a black man who would be beaten to death or lynched, and let's say before or after, whether whether the black man was alive as a captive or, or, or dead, as a lynching victim, they would get, take from a bundle of sticks, one of those sticks, and shove it up his behind. Through the sphincter, up the rectum, up the anus, and that was seen as a form of like, well, now you're a homosexual because I took your manhood, I penetrated you. So even if they if if uh, buck breakers didn't do that through actual rape, they would do that with sticks. Which back in those days, and you're talking centuries ago, where this word F.A.G. was used to refer to that kind of thing, to to a stick or a bundle of sticks. And then it became so common to do that to black men that you get maggot. Maggot. Like, oh, go get me that mag and let's mag it. I'm, I'm using the word maggot for a reason. But literally, like once you put the stick up the guy, then that, that dead corpse that has been completely desecrated, emasculated, is called a maggot. And they're the ones who throw this word around the most. Isn't that crazy? When you want to know what's wrong with the culture of a group of black people, whether they are Caribbean, whether they are, you know, any colonized group of black people who, you know, maybe King Leopold came and chopped up their hands and stuff. And you wonder why they're at war and they're severing each other's limbs. All you need to do is look at the way that their white colonizers treated them. And then you'll see what's wrong with their culture, because we've internalized that. We just stopped beating our kids like slaves with belts. We, we just stopped beating our kids. As, as 80s kids, we were the last to be like lashed that way. 
passed down. It became part of our culture to, to, to whip one another like slaves. And so using this F word, using this bed wench word, and I also want to get to the word mother effer. There's more than bed bugs and, 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 and bed wenches. There, there's something called a breeder. Breeders. There's a reason African-Americans are number one Olympians. There's a reason we win everything that we compete in. We were bred like horses to build a nation. We were bred like horses over centuries to build a nation. This is why we are the most athletic people on earth. You, you can find a Nigerian and, and find a Mandingo and put them up against some of these African-Americans in some of these sports, and they won't do as well. They won't do as well as some of these African-Americans and Caribbeans who were enslaved and, and who have suffered this kind of history. Some of these Haitian Naomi Osaka's out here who can beat a Serena Williams. Look at the history. If Naomi was not half Haitian, if she was half Somali or if she was half Kenyan or if she was half, you know, Hausa, it, it, she wouldn't be the same. It's these people who come from this specific set of chattel slavery who have these bones and these athletics because we had no choice. We were forced into it. And what would happen peculiarly in America, which is why we call this the peculiar institution in most history books that discuss chattel slavery, that didn't happen as much in the Caribbean or in South America, where there were the most slaves taken to, is this peculiar type of breeding where they would put bags over the heads of mothers and sons and make them have sex. They would bag their heads and force them to have sex. And then as an act of humiliation, take the bags off and show them you're a mother effer. You just humped your mom. Do you get what kind of terrorism this is to be a mother who's pregnant with a child of her son, but they bred you like that because, well, where's the strongest man on the plantation? Well, it's him, sir. It's big black Jasper. Well, where's the strongest woman? Where's Henrietta? Oh, you know, well, she's thin, she's petite. Oh, well, where's, uh, you know, I don't know, Bertha? Well, you know, she's big, but she's got no endurance. All right, bring us his mom. Do y'all hear me? Do y'all hear me? So you're breeding people to be big, strong, and dumb. Big, strong, but subservient, docile, and obedient. Like horses. A big, powerful animal that will do whatever you tell it to. And if it doesn't, you break it. You break its spirit or you kill it. You break its spirit or you kill it. Do you, do you understand me? So when they're using this word bedwench, like, like, a, like a phooey. Creeps. Disgusting. Now, I empathize and I sympathize with swirlers, divesters, all these things. But yes, my man is black. But even if he was white. So long as I am having consensual sex that I agree to. Me, Crystal and Karis and Serena Williams, none of us qu would qualify as a bed wench. Shame on you. I hope and I pray that your ancestors hear you using this word that drove so many of your female ancestors and male ancestors to freaking suicide. Who would rather drown themselves at an Igbo landing than to live this life. That so many of us are here because our ancestors survived. I hope they hear you and I hope their hearts and their spirits are against you. You don't invoke that kind of pain against your own people. You just don't. It's a strange thing. It's a strange thing to do something like that. You're not going to hear... 
people, th- th- these Europeans who suffered through the Holocaust, you're not going to hear them talk about what the women had to do in concentration camps, what they were forced to do. You're, you're not going to hear them clown each other with that word. This, this is amazing that you, that you can even talk like this and then call yourself pro-black. I hope your great-grandmother hates you. I hope all your great-aunts dead in their graves, their spirits, whenever, w- 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 with whatever power they have as ancestors, I pray it's against you. Until you rectify this thing in your heart where you think that it's okay to call people bed wenches. I pray that their protection has been lifted off of you. You don't do that to them. It's not fair. I'm fine. I'm not being raped. I'm over here with my high value man with a brand new wardrobe and just got my nails done. I'm great. They're not okay though. The way some of your ancestors, some of these bedwinches, so-called bedwinches were raped to death. How dare you invoke this word? Forget about me. Forget about Crystalline. Forget about uh, Carrie Washington. Like, how dare you? It's them. That's your real problem. It's our ancestors. That's your real problem. You think you're just hurting us, but you're hurting them too. I know you idiots equate death with stopping, but it's not the end. It's, it's not the end. Energy is never destroyed. It's only transformed. Take a science class. I don't know what to tell you. The, these people, I wish, I wish there were some kind of a test to be able to have a voice on YouTube. I just, oh my God. Oh my God. I hope with the enlightenment of what these words mean, because I was also a professional English teacher and that's what I'm certified in. So I taught, you know, in the Middle East, in America, wherever I travel to. I hope that learning these words, this F word that rhymes with maggot, this mother effer, this uh, bed wench and, and where these things come from. I really hope that it helps you to look at the English language just a little bit differently and watch what you say and watch what you invoke. You are carrying a corpse with you, unlike the N-word. But but the N-word has layers. It's evolved. It's a term of endearment. It can mean this, that. It's a noun. It's a person. It's a place. It's a thing. It's it's, it's an adjective. It's an adverb. Good God. Like the N-word has has taken on so many meanings. Bedouin never had that, that change. It was never inflated with more than one meaning. How dare you? On behalf of your own ancestors, I say, how dare you? So, I mean, you can keep it up. But you're heaping hurt onto yourself. I endear myself to my ancestors. I have an ancestor altar. I don't play those games. If I ever spend the night at a plantation, I know with whoever's haunting that house, I know I'm going to be good. I know I'm going to be fine. I might come out of there with power. I might come out of there, you know, floating and levitating and and walking on water. I know I'm going to be good because I endear myself to the people who came before me. I just got in the mail a bunch of ancestor money with Harriet Tubman on it, holding a gun. It's take a photo. It's on my Instagram. Shout out to three is a magic number. A Kenyan, a Kenyan who understands how to glorify and respect your history more than you do. This guy's a Kenyan. This guy's Kikuyu, but he comes from the tradition of the Mau Mau and he understands black freedom fighters and he knows what your legacy means more than your ignorant ass does. And that's why he spends so much time making ancestor money with Harriet Tubman on it, with Bernie Mac on it, with Flo Jo on it, Florence Joyner. He, he gets it. He gets who your ancestors are and what they had to struggle through and what they paid with their blood, with their lives. They're dead. Some of them tortured to death. Some of them, they prayed and their prayers were never answered in their lifetimes, but it wasn't ours. How dare you? Take their name in vain. 
take their pain in vain with this bedwinch word. Like, get out of here. Get out of here. I would rather every black woman who's been called a bedwinch be with her white boyfriend than a man like you. Nunu Loader or whatever, whoever you really are. This does nothing to help your case. This does nothing to help you win support followers. Nothing. nothing. It only makes more sense why so many black women who were once pro-black, who got on YouTube like Cynthia G and Chrissy pro-black love and evolved to ladies keep your options open because some of you men are so self-hating. You hate us too. You hate us too. You hate black women. You want to sleep with us. You demand access to us. You demand us to be your beast of burdens and mules, but you hate us. And I got one of the last of the Mohicans who, who loves me and takes care of me. One of the, the, one of the last of the truly pro-black men on this earth. And you called me a bedwench. Honey, my, my, my man I, I could buy where you live and sell it. Could take your name and turn it into an LLC. Has hired more black people, white people, Asian people, near and far in different countries. Like, like, bro, bro. You wish you were a black man like my man is. I'm the furthest thing from a bed wench. But I will always love and respect and honor my ancestors who were used as bed wenches and bed warmers. I know rape. I know sexual assault. It's nothing. It's not a level of pain to take in vain. You're, you're a truly ruined person. All of you who are, who are throwing this word around. All of you. Hollow inside. And then you want to leave comments. Ha 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 ha. Who hurt you? Your inability to experience hurt, pain, repentance is disgusting because that's where your humanity is. Some of these dogs have more humanity than you. Cats, birds, cattle. Having ears, they don't hear. Having eyes, they don't see. <sighs> I'm up at a unicorn and it's been half an hour. I'm about to go ahead and eat my Panera. That babe got me. With my, my, my fresh full set that babe got me in my apartment that babe pays for on my $700 keyboard that babe paid for for my iMac that babe paid for in my apartment that babe pays for. And I'm going to go ahead and upload this video with a few images that will hopefully make you think. I'm uppity in a mouth.